So thank you for taking the time out. And I know you are one of the pioneers in uh, um, the metaverse education, you know, the future for the future generations to have more equitable education channels to the VR, no matter where you are um, uh, in the world or, or in the society. So I've got to commend you for that. Um, so why don't we start with the brief introduction? I'll introduce myself and uh, then I'll pass it over to you. How's that? So like I said, thank you for taking the time out and talking to me. And uh, this is uh, probably one of the, the very first meetings I have in the <laughs> Metaverse uh, rooms. I uh, wanted to kind of check the functionality, how everything works. So uh, my name is Inderjeet Singh. I, I go by Indy. I'm based out of Dallas, Texas. I work in the IT consulting space and um, also very passionate about uh, the education and initiatives uh, um, uh, around the globe. I came from a very humble background back in India and uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that space. So um, I'm trying to connect with the like-minded people in the uh, VR education space and learn from those folks like yourself. And uh, I'll pass it over to you if you don't mind telling us a little bit more about um, the Moore House college and the metaverse and about yourself would appreciate it sure so i am dr messina morris i am the first metaversity director to ever exist in the world so mm -hmm. i created morehouse in the metaverse which is our metaversity model where we made virtual reality the classroom we use the metaquest 2 to teach our courses um, across all disciplines. So I am a biomolecular chemist by training and by trade um, and began my tenure as a metaversity professor teaching advanced in organic chemistry. Um, I was at the time the department chair of chemistry and wanted to come up with a more engaging way to train our next generation of STEM students. And so Virtual reality was a natural uh, way for me to do this, especially since we were in the pandemic during that particular time. Um, it was myself and three other professors in English history and biology that embarked on this journey and pioneered a path in education for uh, others to follow. So we uh, developed our courses completely in virtual reality and taught them to our students. Um, we had complete support of academic affairs, still do, and now have tripled our course offerings. We work with a company called Victory XR to do our digital twin campus um, build out on the Engage platform. And our students, over 300 of them, have now um, taken courses in virtual reality, experienced not just um, the courses, but health and wellness uh, activities, as well as our gala um, and other experiences that they can, you know, create memories together. So it's been a really good experience to pioneer. So that is a little bit of the background of who I am. I'm currently an assistant professor in education and I'm training pre-service and in-service teachers on how to use innovative technology like virtual reality to differentiate instruction for all different types of learners. That is awesome. Thank you for provi providing that uh, great introduction. Um, so how do you see, uh, Dr. Uh, Morris, um, what are the major differences? Because I know there are some stats that uh, you were showing, um, you know, brick and mortar education, um, online education through Zoom or 2D channels versus uh, the education in the virtual reality in the metaverse. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about those and how immersive education really creates value um, for the students? So for us, we started to see increases in student achievement across the board, but what we really capture was in our world history course, an 11.9% increase in student achievement. And by student achievement, I mean grades. Um, students started to perform better. They also attended courses more. So we saw a 10 percentage point increase in attendance rates. 
And I think that that has a lot to do with the modality. So students were dropping out of Zoom classrooms, um, withdrawing from classes, and it was changing the trajectory of their ability to matriculate through their degree. And what we saw with virtual reality was an ability to persist in your degree program, even when it was remote, even when it was in a hybrid format. Um, by making virtual reality the classroom. So we saw outcomes for students' engagement really soar because of the type of instruction that students were getting. And students were not just getting this instruction as an enhancement to the lessons, but they were also, they were getting it as the lesson, like it was used as the tool. So it was bring your avatar to class or bring your headset to class and you show up in class as your avatar persona. And so students, had a different experience together and were creating memories and experiences as a cohort um, that was synchronous, it was live, it was the real person behind it. We have face-enabled avatars in our courses in our hyper-realistic campus environment. And our campus was specifically designed um, to be a digital twin, but also um, we as professors augmented the space so that it could be culturally responsive for our students, so that our students could be very comfortable using this new technology to actually learn their discipline, regardless of how complex it was, they would feel like they were at home on our HBCU campus. Great, great. And uh, tell us some more about the journey. Uh, when did you start and how long was the process to have the the VR education uh, rolling out of the college? So in the summer of 2020, I served as a science research coordinator for the TRIO program, which is our upper bound math sciences for first generation college students. And during that time we used virtual reality, but it was an asynchronous version because it was tethered to the next generation science standards. And that's when we found Victory XR as a company. And they were the only ones in the space that were already having like pre-made lessons and all of the STEM disciplines already available because they worked with Carolina Biologics and they were doing dissections and all those kind of things. So we bought the Pico VR headset, which is a three degrees of freedom headset that students could use. And then not only were they experiencing a different way of learning, but they were not in Zoom classes the entire time. The downside to using asynchronous virtual reality to teach sciences was that I didn't know what students were doing. I didn't know how far they were getting in their lessons and we still had to get on Zoom to talk about it and discuss it. So I wasn't experiencing it with them. So after that, uh, Steve Grubbs, who is the CEO of Victory XR, worked with our academic affairs office at Morehouse College and pitched the idea of a virtual reality academy or campus that they had and if we wanted to utilize it because it would give us that synchronous learning environment. So our academic affairs office, um, Dr. Michael Hodge, who's the provost, and Deshante Carmen at the time was the program manager over innovation, found for innovative professors who were basically professors of the year who had been doing it and you know, innovating in curriculum. So it was myself, Dr. Ovell Hamilton, Dr. Ethel Vereen, and Dr. Tanya Clark all came together to build a proof of concept that virtual reality could be the next uh, campus concept um, for learning. And so literally from the time that we had secured funding from the Southern Company and Qualcomm till we actually initiated the first lesson was 60 days, if not less. So in 60 days, we literally built um, our entire Metaversity academic first courses. So it was three courses that were being taught, a couple that were taught cross-disciplinary um, between English and chemistry and biology and chemistry. And all four of us embarked on this journey of pioneering the pathway of what now a metaversity looks like. Great. Awesome. And if I um, if I understand correctly, you have PhD in chemistry. I right? do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because chemistry was one of the hardest subjects for me when I was in when I was school, um, but because uh, you didn't good. have me as a teacher, <laughs> if you had me, I, I wish different. now maybe in the virtual reality, the students may not have to uh, struggle, um, and they they can learn um, chemistry uh, through VR because I've seen some of the models that really make sense for subjects like chemistry and physics, even, even biology, to have the immersive learning and um, the way. 
how our senses work and being in the 3D environment, definitely that is great. So I know we're reaching towards the end of the time uh, of our uh, connection here of the interview. Dr. Morris, uh, what is the recommendation that you have for, for uh, schools or universities around the globe if they want to adapt uh, uh, virtual reality as part of their education offerings? Um, uh, what, what would you um, recommend to them? So first of all, you have to have real good buy-in from not just academic affairs, but also from the institution itself. I always say that, you know, this isn't something that you thrust upon uh, professors to add another layer to what they have to do. This is something that you find the most innovative, creative people who are already doing things like this in the space. You incentivize them to be a part of the team and create your own pilot for what your institution needs. So I think that it can work in all disciplines. We've shown that it can, but what needs to be done is there needs to be more uh, work and curriculum really built out for others to be able to just kind of pull down those lesson plans and actually utilize them. So in every subject matter. But what we're starting to see is um, people that, you know, are kind of being thrust into this. And I tell people that's kind of like a no, no, don't do that. Um, that's kind of like how we ended up trying to reinvent what education looks like in the first place. And one of the major things that um, any institution can do is to really incentivize by course releases for faculty, allowing them time to be able to really be creative and actually develop the curriculum that is necessary and needed and find those people who are really wanting to develop their scholarship and give them a pathway through the tenure and promotion system using this as a part of their scholarship. So for me, that is the most important thing I can say. And then always reach out to me um, for professional development because I can help. I think purposeful partnerships with companies like Victory XR are really useful because you don't have to be a software engineer. They have the blueprint that you need to follow. Um, I am doing trainings in the metaverse for instructors. So, um, you know, follow me for tips or, you know, just contact me and I'll consult with you on your project and see how I can um, help align some of your curriculum because I am also a certified educator. So that's what I also do. Um, but my website is Unite the Metaverse. And the reason why I started Metaverse United was really because even though I'm a higher ed professional, it's important for all levels of education, including um, lifelong learners to be able to access this technology, harness it for their next level of, of reskilling, upskilling, or monetizing. So um, I always say that we're going to take people from the womb to the tomb into the metaverse and help people really find where they belong. So um, if you are interested in, in that, then you will find me. If you want to build out your metaversity, still find me and uh, Victory XR as a company because they are a great company to work with. So that is awesome. That's great to hear. So um, thank you for being one of the pioneers along with the along with the Victory XR company for taking um, and, and the charge in the virtual education space. I uh, personally believe it has a lot of potential. And um, everyone who's working in this space want to learn, like Dr. Morris had mentioned, uh, follow. Um, I, I want to make sure I say your name right, Messina Morris. Perfect. <laughs> All right, follow her on LinkedIn. And, uh, and also, if you have any questions, you can reach out. And uh, I'm sure that we will connect in the future. Thank you for um, taking the time out and connecting with us today. Really appreciate uh, that. Really appreciate you. So find me at unitethemetaverse.com. All my social links are there. So that's there easy you go. to awesome. find. Thank yeah. you. And uh, you have a very good day. All right. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Take care.